Hi everybody, I'm just doing a test right here. I want to make sure we have the sound and our acoustics correct this time. Uh, since we tried to do this live video last week and we had some technical challenges with our sound. So I'm waiting for Asha to hop on here. And uh, my name, I will wait for her to hop on. My name is Laura Joseph. I am the founder for um, Healing with Spirit. And um, let me see if I can get her on here. I'm trying to see how I add you. Asha, for some reason, it's not letting me add you right now. Let's see how we get you on here. Um, Asha, I think you need to tap in there, about it, girl, because I'm not getting you on here to add you to the broadcast here. So I need you to kind of tap in um, so we can uh, do this. But anyway, while I'm waiting for Asha to kind of chime in here, my name is Laura and um, I am a healer, educator, speaker. I'm a natural born intuitive. Some have labeled me a metaphysician. I'm a trauma survivor, health advocate, mentor, artist, writer, and I guess overall badass uh, spiritual badass, if you want to call it that. So, and I'm waiting for Asha to come on in so we can uh, bring her in so we can talk about some of the things that we are doing. And um, let me just give me just a second as I'm trying to get her on here. And I am not seeing you, Asha. I can't add you. Um, I need to somehow get you in here. But um, there we go. There we go. So, um, and we're, let me just tell you a little bit about her. Um, Asha is the number one bestseller for the author of The Priestess Code, uh, The Awakening of the Modern Woman, where feminine principles are revealed for a more organic and harmonious approach to life with a background in molecular biology and business development. She breaks all the esoteric and business develop. Um, sorry, teachings into practical, logical approaches to living. Asha is a minister of spiritual peacemaking and incorporates philosophies such as feng shui, karma healing, human design, just to name a few. She's originally from Venezuela and she is part Indian. She currently lives in Harvard with her soulmate, two daughters and a 50 pound water dog. So I'm very excited that the next retreat that we are doing will be incorporating some of the priestess magic uh, Asha will be bringing to our table. So I'm just waiting for her to come on so we can, um, uh, so let's see here, somehow we are having trouble getting her on here. So Asha, you're being added. So while we're waiting for her again, let me just continue. So the purpose of this retreat is to create a safe space. I'm a big advocate, probably because of my trauma training, to create a safe space for women and to let their guard down opening without fear and without worry, to be heard with, to nurture, uh, to grow. Basically in a community supported in sisterhood. So the idea of sisterhood is something that is not new, but it is something that we really, I think, desperately need in modern times right now. We are women that are, uh, is stronger. And the power wanting to grow together with support of each other without judgment and to be held in the room, in one room, to me is magic. So I'm very honored to have uh, Asha to be a part of this particular retreat. And I'm trying to get her to chime in so she can join in on the conversation here. <laughs> <laughs> we got you on finally. Oh my gosh, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> we're figuring this out as we go, right? So um, we're very good at our connecting to our ancient roots, but technology is not my is not my suit. So, <laughs> but Asha, please tell us um, 
what you're coming to the retreat with and the, some of the magic mm. that you are going to be bringing. Because I think, and I think I've had some people ask me, like, what does a priestess, what, it, mm. like, what does that mean? What does, um, you know, a goddess mean? What does, you know, being witchy mean? <laughs> so I've had some women ask me some of those questions. So I figured, why don't we start there so people understand what that means so they can understand the part of the experience of what they might have with this retreat. Yeah. You know, I think one of the biggest things or the biggest um, kind of holes that I have seen in our spiritual community, especially here in New England, is that there is a lot of work um, like on the upper chakras um, there's a lot of like this meditating, connecting, visualizing, and the heart, right? Like so much healing in the heart. And what I, I mean, I'm a very practical person. Like I love all that stuff, but I also want to be able to embody. I want to be able mm. to have it live in my body, like have it live in my creative energy, in my root, like have me be grounded. My dog's going to join me here. <laughs> I don't know if you see her. <laughs> Mine's sitting right below here, so she's here. <laughs> and being a priestess, like I think the, the definition of being a priestess is really somebody who is in devotion to something bigger than herself, yet she is that also. And it's someone who is just in devotion to whether it be humanity um, or it be um, the divine. And, mm. you know, in terms of like goddess, I, I, I really, I see that all as archetypes, like I really see the goddess as an archetype that we can tap into because it's something that lives inside us. Like we're not separate from divinity. Mm. We're not separate from creatoris. Um, we, we are her, we are that. And it's the dismantling of what we've been taught because we've been taught that we're separate and it's the mm -hmm. dismantling of that separation and the discovery and the curiosity of how am I her? How am I her? And I find magic to be like just super fun. Like it's just fun. It's fun to play with candle magic. It's fun to make concoctions. Like that's how I spend my Friday mornings. <laughs> and <I'm> <laughs> You know, people, I think, misinterpret what magic really is. You know, when I speak of magic, I go, all you got to do is look around you. Mm. You know, the hummingbird that can actually fly backwards mm. to me is magic. You know, um, you know, a bumblebee that can actually carry pollen to pollinate flowers to give these beautiful flowers that we're able to enjoy and fruits to bear from it is magic. Mm. And I think we have really have kind of disassociated what real magic is that's all around us. Some say it's miracles. You know, if you go, if you don't believe in miracles, you're not going to see them. If you don't believe in magic, you're not going to see it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for so sure. I think, I think you and I are both in the, in the same realm in the fact of we need to get into the womb. We need to get into the root for us to be strong, for us to embody you know, we come from two different practices, but I think our methodologies and getting down to the root, I think, is in the same alignment, mm. which is why I'm so excited about partnering with this, because we're bringing two different methodologies that are kind of addressing the same thing. Mm. And, and I'm, I can't wait for that day. So oh, it's just it's fun. Just you know, I, I mean, I think that we can get so heady about healing or wholeness or connection to the divine. We can get super heady, super serious. And it's kind of nice when we can, like, have, like, that seriousness. Like, I'm, I mean, I'm very serious. Like, I have Scorpio energy. Like, I'm all, you know, like, that, that's great. <laughs> and what I've seen is that when we can have fun and just be playful, it just brings out this other element that it's like, ooh, I don't have to, like, think up of how I want this manifested in my life. It's like, I am just manifesting because I'm having such a good time. Yeah, well, you know, like we say from a lot of my Japanese teachings, it's, it's, you're raising that level of vibration. Mm -hmm. So when you raise that vibration, it's like you can cut through the cords a lot easier. You can cut through the fog. 
you can get the clarity. And I think there's a fine level. You know, I did a, I did a, uh, a video several months ago about spiritual bypassing. Mm -hmm. I think there's a fine line between getting so far up here and actually mm, not doing the work. Totally. Versus doing the work and keeping it up here. And I think there's a fine line that, you know, I think a lot of us are learning what that is. And I always say there's a fine line, you know, there's, you can go one slightly over here and you're really going this direction, or you can mm. go slightly over here and you're going that direction, you know? So it's a matter of really fine tuning. And, you know, when I started doing these retreats in 2012, oh, wow. it was really about bringing women together. I think not to just bringing women together, but it was about learning ways. I think we have been so conditioned to be a certain way. And then we say we don't have time for us. So we've got this issue with that things that prevent us. And when we get a group of women, I said, I think I said earlier in the videos, we get a group of women that are on the same path or at least craving the same path. Then to me, that is magic because just the energy of the holding of the space, yeah. it's not something words can explain. It is something that you really have to be there to witness, to feel, to sense, and to know that you can take this home with you. It's not something that, oh, it's just a one day thing. And now what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's biology um, that supports that. Like the, the biology mm -hmm. of women being together, like they've, they've tested this, like our oxytocin level increases by just being with other women. So there's literally, you do feel that feel good feeling um, by being with one another. And, and it's, you know, if you look at my, my allergies are like super active. Um, <laughs> if you look at, if we can tap into who we are as humans, we're really about community. We're really about mm -hmm. togetherness. And in our modern times, for different reasons, we're separate from each other. And there's mm -hmm. beauty in that too. Like many of us are super sensitive and it's like kind of nice to be able to live in the middle of the woods and no one bothers me. But there is also, there is also a separation of like what we can get from each other. Like the, right. the beautiful exchange that can happen with one another. And when we're in environments that are all about the intention being that, you know, you and I are holding space for people to truly transform and truly come home to themselves. When that's the intention, like magic and beauty and all the goodness just gets to spin in there with us. You know, and, 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 and what people bring too, right? Like if the deep desire and intention that they have is also to do that, they co-create with us. Well, that's, that's glad that you said that because it kind of goes into, I've said to people that have been to some of my retreats, I remind them that the title of it will stay the same, but the focus with each one will, might be different with a different co-facilitator. Why? Because it's, it's about embodying surrendering to that self-care mm. it's journeying it journeying into that self-discovery right and it's nurturing that soul part that a lot of times as women we feel like we don't have time mm. so and one of the things i started instituting was yeah we do goodie bags at the end of the retreat but i also encourage um and it's been fascinating over the years to see what people bring you know oh and um, and they even the attendees, I said, you know, just bring something. If you feel like bringing something, great. If no, great. You know, I've had even corporate sponsors bring in gift cards and things like that, which are beautiful. But sometimes it was just a little note, a different separate little note that people mm. put in different bags or a little crystal that they felt was appropriate for that particular person. Oh, so cool. everybody walked home with a goodie bag of all these little magical treats and treasures that you can go home and look at and, and enjoy. And, and to me, I find that also you're, you're involving, like you said, the community, mm -hmm. you know, yes, we're holding this space, but we're all part of it co-creating. Yeah. So I always encourage the attendees. Yeah. It doesn't, I'm not asking you to spend money. It's just whatever you want to do. If you feel like doing it, great. If don't, then that's okay too. But I have been amazed over the years at what people have brought, you know, mm. and I just, I just go, Hmm. That just warms me because it just goes to show that they're thinking more than just themselves. Mm -hmm. They're thinking out, thinking about how can we all make this? Because at the end of the day, I always say we hold the space. 
how successful or how transformative it is. The other half of it is who shows up. It's the, and the you choice know? of how they want to show up, right? It's the choice exactly. of how we each want to show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm very excited to be co-creating this. I don't think the timing could have been, considering the, even the political climate right now, I don't think the timing of this could have been any better. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm very grateful that, you know, things aligned perfectly for us to be able to do this together. Um, for those who want to know, now the registration, the regular should say, registration is still open until May yeah, 31st. Second. So um, we do have only a few couple, we only have a few spots left, but please try to register. If, I know there's a few people that said they are and I haven't gotten the registrations in yet. So if you are planning and registering, please make sure you get those in, ideally by May 31st if there's a challenge please just reach out to me. You know, sometimes you go, oh, I don't get paid until June 1st. Well, just reach out to me. We'll figure something out. <laughs> but the, the, the big thing is, is uh, we have to, like Asha and I have to start preparing for the retreat. Yes, I have to know how many energy. candles to get. Yes. So <laughs> the supplies that we have to get, there are, um, we have to let the monastery know how many meals they have to, and, and, by the way, the meals at the monastery, depending on the season, I mean, I was told in the fall that they try to the best they can. They have their own organic garden. So they do tend to make their own meals from their garden with, the, with, the, wow. with what they have available. So, um, and it will be a healthy vegetarian meal. I do ask them to make it dairy free. Mm. Um, and so, you know, again, it's we're nourishing the mind, the body and the mm. spirit. So they were just, oh, we can have Danish for breakfast. And I go, I go, that's really tasty, <laughs> but it kind of defies what we're kind of trying to, trying to hold here. So yeah. it's about bringing all of it to the table. So yeah. beautiful. Um, I highly encourage that, you know, we, we, we try to finish, you know, those that are saying or that are on the fence, make sure you get your registrations in. We will be taking them after uh, May 31st, but there is a late fee attached. So I highly encourage that um, we do that. And, um, and that'll also allow, like I said, Ash and I to prepare because we want to be able to have a container that's really highly conducive. So last minute registrations, if we get too many of them, can really kind of throw a wrench there energetically. So it's kind of a nice, polite way of saying, please get a man earlier than later. <laughs> and, but, um, and you know, there's something too when Can you hear me? When you say your sacred mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I hear you. Uh -oh. I have something coming in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ignore it so we might have a little ding. Yeah, Hold it's on. buzzing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. When we say yeah, our sacred What happens, I guess. <laughs> when you say your sacred yes to yourself, mm -hmm. it's like your spirit, your soul, your everything enrolls also. And, it, and that's a very good point. And it very starts playing. It starts playing in the field. And it starts saying to, um, you know, to you, to me, like, oh, this is what she needs. Oh, this is what she needs. That thing, make sure you bring that. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. That book, make sure you grab that. Those flowers, that's what she needs. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be um, a wonderful day. I'm, I'm so honored to be sharing it with you. And um, I look forward every time I host it and facilitate mm. it. The last one we did in October, I was blown away with some of the added things. We actually had to do raffle tickets because they go, well, I have this book here if anybody wants. I go, okay, let's do raffle tickets. And it, but it was like not just one. It was like six different things or seven different things. And I'm like, thank God I have raffle tickets here, you know. And we were just... And it became fun. It was a fun way to even close out the day. People didn't realize they were going home with such beautiful things mm. that they didn't know that others were bringing, you know? So I, I just, I love the magic of how it unfolds during the day. You know, the, the space that we're, we're having it at, they have a beautiful, magnificent labyrinth that hopefully weather will cooperate and we'll be able to easily take advantage of. So their grounds are magnificent. Mm. So we will be doing um, some outdoor stuff. It's not going to be all indoors. Yeah, so nice. Me, I'm a tree girl. Me. I need to be outside. So. 
<laughs> we'll be doing as much as we can, I think, outside as much as possible. Um, did I miss anything? <laughs> Asha? Um, how many people are, do you have space for? Um, I believe I have to check the numbers. I know there was a couple of registration that came in in the past day or two. Um, I believe we have space for four more. Okay. Okay. And it's a, and it's an intimate group. Yes. Yeah. So it's a, well, it's a maximum of 20 people. Okay. Okay. So I believe we have, that includes you and us with the, with mm -hmm. the, um, so the four people. So I think we're at like 13, 13 or 14 people right now. Okay. Yeah, I, I like that number. I mean, that's a good number, right? To kind of, um, you know, intimacy is in, intimacy, into me, see, you know, into you, see, into me, see me, um, all those things, <laughs> all those variations of that. Um, people talk a lot about vulnerability. And we talk a lot in, in our modern culture. There's a lot that's talked about vulnerability in social media. And I think we're missing we miss sometimes what it really means when we explore vulnerability in public spaces. Vulnerability is like what you are creating, like the space that you're creating, that's true vulnerability to be seen for where we are and where we're wanting to go in a space that's sacred. That's where magic starts. Yeah. And that's what I'm hoping, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, Unless you go, I mean, I have just, I mean, people can go onto the website um, if they want to look at what others have said in the past. Um, you know, uh, I just saw one right here. It says, this retreat exceeded my expectations, you know, to, um, I highly recommend, this was the best retreat I've ever been on, and I've gone on to a lot. Mm. You know, so they can go on if they want to you know, see some feedback of others if they mm -hmm. feel like they're on the fence. But like you said, what I have learned, if it hits me in the gut, and for those who say, well, I don't know if I have the money. Well, here's the deal. If it hits you in the gut, then you need to be there because I've been in that position where I've had to choose. Do I invest? Do I not? Um, and is it going to affect me paying this bill or not? If you worry about that, what if coming opens that door for more financial security because you're opening totally. doors? Totally. So I think it's a matter of trust and faith. And I wanted to say, as a, to kind of wrap up here, is if it hits you in the gut, if there's a will, there's a way. I can go on another video and, and say how many things when I went to go get my Jikidin certification and I needed about $2,000 and two weeks to come up with it to go for my training. I was amazed at the money that just showed up mm. and it made me cry and, mm. and uh, just showed up and it changed my life. So, you know, it, it's one of those things. If, it, if you feel like you need to be here, mm. then you need to be here. If it calls to you, then you need to be here. If that means canceling other plans, then you need to be here. Because I've said to people, you and I have got so much going on and so much in the hopper right now. I go, as much as I would love to have you back, I go, we may, it may or may not happen in the near future again. Who knows, you know? And I said to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing that we have both have so much wonderful things that are going on. <laughs> There's school coming up and everything else. And I go, but it may not align quite exactly in the near future. So this is an opportunity. It may be once in an opportunity for those who are saying, geez, this is the energy I want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Then do it. Mm -hmm. Then do it. Yeah. So any final words? I'm excited. I'm excited to see how we play. I'm excited to see who comes. And, and I mean, I have my, my, my cabinet over there with goodies. Like once, once we know who, we get the names, like I will go to play. <laughs> to pull yes. out all the goodness that we're going to bring so that we can um, spin some magic together and, um, and really honor ourselves and honor each other. So psyched. And that's, that's, that's beautiful. Thank you, Asha. And I really look forward to it. And yes, I have told some of you, those of you who've seen me in person, I said, Asha plans these candle magic and may think that she just brings the stuff there and it's, we just do it all there. No, she spends probably about a week getting the herbs <laughs> together, the right concoctions together, knowing who's going to be there because mm. she taps into all your energies. And so that's why we're, we're encouraging you to make sure you get those registrations by May 31st, because it's going to help us 
really amplify the things that we need to plan for that whole week ahead of time. Totally. So we're, yeah. I'm really excited. So thank you so much, Asha. I look forward to that day of play with you. All right. <laughs> Me too. It'll be fun. <laughs> thank you. Bye, everybody.